word physical therapy has a very cool look to it. Um, oh, yeah. Props to the to the branding behind it. Oh yeah. What makes onward physical therapy different from let's say SSM or is that even still a brand? You know SSM, a hospital physical therapy. Uh, How about that? Yeah, this is like the best opening question. It comes down to onward physical therapy is leading the future of what we'd call what physical therapy actually is. We have an identity crisis in our profession for like. 10 different approaches to treat the same problem. Right. So onward physical therapy is a specialty clinic that really is geared towards treating people who are active or passionate about their health and fitness. Got you. Where did uh, onward start? Athlete specific, but not, it doesn't, if you don't identify yourself as an athlete and just someone who just really values their health and is going to be an active individual, still up your alley. Still up our alley for sure. Um, But it's going to skew towards people who are intentional about their health and fitness. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where did uh, Onward start? The first Onward started in Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. And so you worked there before owning an Onward yourself? I actually did not. I have lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico for the past like five years. Um, that's where I started and still have a practice back there. Um, I got connected to the people that started Onward and are highly involved in that, that company through different continuing education courses. And I just nurtured that relationship with them, spending more time with them. It eventually got to a point where my wife and I knew we wanted to move back to the Kansas City area. <clears throat> and that's where we continued the conversation about, well, maybe it makes sense to do an onward in Kansas City with them. You guys so, have the option, like, you know, you've, you've spent time obviously doing physical therapy well before you opened your own, right? When you decided to go with Onward, what is specific about that brand that was different from your teachings in school? Take this one, Joe. Um, we talk a lot about trying to keep the person as fit as possible. So we onward talks a lot about, and ice talks a lot about people aren't dying from shoulder pain. It's like, how do we address the bigger thing of pushing fitness and challenging that? And then onward allows us to do that where we're maybe school is more focused on symptoms. It's like, okay, Kyle, come in, let's talk about your back, but we're going to figure out how to keep you in the gym, how to keep pushing fitness. And, uh, doing that in that way and just onward allows you to do that more so in our model versus the traditional SSM type model. Right. So when you said, I heard the word ice in there. Yeah. What, what is that for our listeners and for me? Cause I don't know shit about that. Ice is for the Institute of clinical excellence. Oh, okay. it's a continuing. Of edu- course I should have <laughs> known. Sorry. It's a, a continuing education company uh, for physical therapists, um, occupational therapists, um, different medical professionals. Um, and I, ice is, company that has set their values on hands-on manual therapy skilled clinicians, um, psychologically informed, um, getting to build relationships and trust with people and then fitness forward. And, and I would say fitness forward is the thing that sets ice apart in specifically the physical therapy world. Right. we're talking about the, the, the hospital version of physical therapy versus the performance I would, can I, is that, is that an okay word to it, use here for you guys? Yeah. I was word. about to say is, is physical therapy basically broken up into like you said, occupational therapy and then physical therapy, occupational therapy being if somebody is not working out essentially, or they have maybe a worse uh, injury. Well, I think it's to your occupation, right? I mean, like getting you back to work. Yeah. Getting you back to work. Yeah. Occupational therapy probably going to skew more towards back to work. Uh, traditionally it's, into like, oh, it's just lower extremity issues and PTs handle the shoulder. And, and that's a very old school approach and look to it. Um, as far as like different kinds of physical therapy, um, probably to one of your earlier questions for like what stands out about Onward is as Ooh. clinicians, we were working in different clinics, different environments after we get our degree and we go practice. And we would run into a lot of roadblocks for fitness and exercise is very passionate and important to me to bring into my clinical care with people and patients. And a lot of these office settings and work environments wouldn't support that environment. I want to get someone picking up a barbell. I want to get someone moving a heavy kettlebell. Um, And they would be very much fear-based or hesitant to move in that direction in a culture and an environment where you're basically bashing your head against the wall. I want to challenge my patients more than what I am in this environment. And my work environment's not allowing that. I'm on, with you. onward really is like, nope, we're going to sure to solve people. problems, not just band aid them. Yes. We're going to challenge people in a totally different direction and really focus in on what's important for them, which is typically working out. 
Right. Or at least continuing to stay active, right? If that's a yeah. big part of their identity and lifestyle, I want to be able to continue that. Um, this is a, this is a great question for if you guys have been following the Chiefs at all. We've obviously had a couple of season-ending surgeries. If you guys follow the team at all, are you for sure Pacheco fan or a Hollywood oh, yeah. Brown fan? So, um, could you guys get Pacheco fixed and back in the game by next week? I'm pretty sure he uh, broke his ankle. Yeah, so. I'm yeah. saying, can you fix <laughs> that? <fibula. laughs> Put his healing hands on him and get him back in. That's the right. Give him a little Mr. Miyagi because we need to put him back in the starting line. They just right. need to tape that thing up and just let's a little, go. A little clap and. Oh, yeah. Get him going. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Throw some dust on that. You know, it'll be good to go. Joe, if you could please give me kind of like a rundown of what Hollywood Brown is going to have to go through with his rehab because of his shoulder surgery that he just had to have. Surprisingly, it was supposed to be like a clavicle, injury, right? Clavicle. Yeah. Clavicle. Mm-hmm. And it, the bone apparently moved on the three week checkup. It was that going to be a four week total kind of injury. One week it was fine. Yeah. Then at the three week checkup, they saw that the bone moved and they said, all right, sorry, man. Yeah. Surgery is happening. You're not going to come back till mid January, maybe. So, what does that rehab process look like for a, especially an NFL player coming out of an injury like that? Yeah. We have to be ready, not just to, you know, do their profession, but they're going to have to be taking some huge blows. Right. I can speak to that personally because I broke my collarbone in high school playing mm-hmm. football, mm-hmm. and I had the surgery done where I when they fix it with the plate and screws and that sort of thing. And uh, the first phase is really just letting that bone, that site heal down, right? Letting those screws kind of fixate to themselves. Mm-hmm. And this is where kind of the onward mindset is, okay, um, I have my wing in the sling sort of thing. I can still push my fitness. So he's going to be healing down, doing his thing, but he's probably still going to be on the bike, pushing fitness on the um, maybe, uh, you know, running or that sort of thing, right? Early on, probably bike, but still getting some fitness in just to keep his cardiovascular up. Then from there, it's going to be pushing the things as far as, range of motion, that sort of thing, getting the shoulder just to look and feel normal moving around. Then I'll get back into just growth strength, being able to press strength, bench press, that sort of thing. And then kind of by the time December rolls around, we'll get to more field specific stuff, just being jerky and obviously being able to block, um, put some weight through the shoulder, that sort of thing. So what's, what, the, what's the biggest challenge? Sorry to interrupt. No, Is it, what's the biggest challenge here for someone like that in the sense of, you know, if it's a, if it's a clavicle, you know, him going up for a ball Absolutely. And, and throwing his arm up in Absolutely. the sky like that. Is that not like the Absolutely. hardest part? That's where it comes from a receiver, just that outstretched arm. I think laying out for the ball, that's where you see a lot of guys with shoulder clavicle type injuries where they're just reaching out. And it's a very uh, vulnerable spot to be in, right? So for him, it's going to be even just a mental hurdle of like, man, going back up for the ball, going fighting for it, that sort of thing. Um, which I think PTSD, will come with, if you will, there. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Going through the middle. I mean, come on. Yeah. You, Hospital you, pass. In the no middle. doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, that's where the mental reps of with his training staff to catch balls over the middle with the pads and that sort of thing and taking some of those hits um, is going to be a big part of that on the back end. So, is he getting surgery where he has to have a plate put into his? Uh, Luke, give us the Google on that. I don't know about the plate part of it. Um, I just know that that surgery was the, the original injury was extremely rare. They only had like four cases of it in the NFL. I thought Tyreek had the same injury. It, it, like ironically, that, like against right the, the same sternum, team. Huh? Yeah. It happened to him against the Jaguars too. It was the exact same team, same time frame. Hmm. And it was supposed to be like a four or five week deal. And Tyreek was the last NFL player to have it. Yeah. But then when, when Hollywood Brown went back for his, for his uh, like checkup after three weeks, it said, Oh, sorry. Um, it's actually, um, it's actually out of place again. And so, you know, we have to deal, go through with the surgery. It's not going to be a non-surgical problem. So, man, there's a ton of injuries in the league right now. It's yeah. wild. It's wild. Mm-hmm. People's fantasy teams are getting blown up right now. Yeah, absolutely, man. <sighs> I mean, AJ Brown was out. Um, we got, he's on my know, team. McCaffrey's yeah. McCaffrey's out. out. Um, to a concussion on IR. It's wild. It's like, man, Jordan you know, love. It goes to show, man, like it's the preseason and like think about how terrible the offenses have looked in the first few weeks of the season. <laughs> and it's like not even I don't even think it's to be funny. It's it's uh, like the preseason is really just now September yeah. in real life. Yeah. Not the real preseason because that's yeah. really just now like a, a way to, I guess, just to evaluate talent that's yeah. going to be on your practice squad. But September, it's like no one's no one's really cri- you know clip, uh, no crisp and clip and crisp and. I don't even know what word I'm looking for. Precise, ready to roll. Yeah, sort of thing. the Saints are the only offense that have just oh, been yeah. slaying people. But to circle this all back, like these guys have um, top of the line care, and they still can't prevent injuries. So, like, what's stopping Kyle or me from seeking out somebody to try to keep my body right? Mm-hmm. Like, if these guys are still getting hurt, like, what makes think I'm I'm the exception? I'm going to be special and I'm going to avoid things and not go seek someone out who can help me do the thing better, what? run, squat, lift, that sort of thing. What What are you guys' thoughts on like so preventative care? 
Like what, what things that are popular on the market right now that you think are worth doing now I'm talking like ice baths, you know, saunas, um, all the amenities, right? Yeah. Massage guns. What, what, yeah. Which I, man, I hammer a massage gun. So don't tell me that that's, I think, uh, I think more than anything, this is why onward has a restore and perform, which is our kind of monthly membership once a month, twice a month, check-in more than anything. People just need a guide. They just need a body movement person, someone in their corner with something blips up. Kyle texts me. He's like, Hey, what do I do? I just did this with my ankle. What should I do next? And then we give you this, the spiel of, you know, instead of icing, maybe we go hit the bike. So we get blood flowing Then let's come in and loop in and come back through. So I say more than anything, it's just finding a person in your corner that you can lean on to do the things where we go do some body work, some dry needling. We don't have a, I, we don't have a cold plunge, but, uh, some of those other things, right? I think those are good, um, amenities to supplement what you're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. But staying plugged in with somebody that uh, can put hands on you, work the tissues, that sort of thing. Cause I don't need to work you out. You're already active, mm-hmm. right? But because you're challenging your body, something's going to come up. So let's just stay on top of it and stay fresh, just like every, all the other guys are, right? Yeah. And so to I'm, I'm going to call myself a novice in this category because um, I have not ever explored, um, let's say, prehab of any sort. I don't, I don't use a chiropractor. I don't use a massage therapist. He doesn't even stretch. Well, yeah. I mean, do most grown men stretch on the, on the daily? No, no, they, they need don't. to. I do. <laughs> I certainly wish I, I, I certainly, uh, you know, I'm like, I'll just keep, you know, staying st- tight as hell. Did you slam? Right. I'll be, I'll be at banging 18 this years table. old. Jeff's like, I'm done stretching. I'm a grown stiff, man now. Stiff I stretched <laughs> yesterday <laughs> just so you know, but it was at the I'm end of my workout. Shit. But no, I'm like, I'm like, dude, I get it. Like, um, I am the, like the, we've talked about this on the podcast several times. I'm not a mobile person, uh, never genetically gifted in that. And I could be working way harder on it and I don't, and, uh, I can't touch my toes, so on and so forth. So the real question is if you're, if anybody is out there like me who is just, you know, Hey, I work out, I, you know, I don't, I don't make it a part of my whole life. It's simply something that I'm doing to, you know, to take care of myself on a daily basis so I can lead my family, so on and so forth. But then you like, look at these different options out there and it can feel overwhelming. Saturated. Right? It, Super there's saturated. Just, yeah, there's a, and it's saturated in a sense of because it's a paralysis by analysis situation where I have so many options, right? I could go to a chiropractor who said they can help me. I could talk to a massage therapist. They'll absolutely tell me they can help me. And obviously you guys can help me. So if you are a, you know, an everyday athlete, if you will, um, who is just trying to stay healthy for their family and live a long life um, that has health at the focus, right? Mm-hmm. When is it appropriate to approach onward physical therapy versus these other services like massage therapy and chiropractic? That's a great question. I, probably always appropriate. If you have questions about how could I do this better, um, that means you're spiking a little bit of your an unknown in your mindset. So like I'm in the gym, I'm training, moving weight around or on the treadmill, doing some different things. If you are thinking, how do I do this better? <clears throat> As Joe mentioned earlier, we can kind of be a guide in that nature. How do we dial in some programming that might be better suited to what your particular goal So programming are. alone is a different offering, it sounds like. It, but it's all tied into the same skill set and package of what we offer through the experience. If you if you come in and become a client or patient, if you're working on a particular problem, we like to think of ourselves as a one-stop shop for if it's body work, if it's working on a specific injury, it's prehab or kind of ongoing performance technique work i mean managing volume it's the whole deal side. right on the technique I, I think, work side is that with lifting weights absolutely okay snatching I, gymnastics work i mean when i when i you know i told you guys that i i did physical therapy for like six months after i hurt my back and uh the thing that was most surprising to me was when i when i first started going we did we did some assessments right and those assessments um he was like well you know, here's the reason why you got, you know, issues going on. You have this going on in your hip, your, your ankle mobility is very bad. Your upper back mobility is bad. So when you're doing over overhead um, stuff, it basically he was saying, um, he wasn't surprised that I had a back injury because right. I was overcompensating with my back due right. to, um, immobility issues and other parts. Yeah. Other parts of my body. And it's all connected. Um, right. So, right. It's- and it was like things that, you know, I never really thought about because, you know, most people, even though I was doing mobility stuff, I wasn't focusing on like ankle mobility. Right. right. I was just doing really heavy cleans. And if I caught a clean and my knees were caving in, you know, Hey, that's just the way that I clean in my right. head. That's the way I was thinking about it. Um, and so, you know, that's the thing that was like most surprising to me about the physical therapy that it's not just, um, I guess it's evolved, um, from 
being like, okay, we're going to stretch you out and we're going to give you a few of these exercises into right. more of a comprehensive thing where all of a sudden Absolutely. I'm doing a lot of mobility stuff. I'm doing, um, yeah, another thing was like my, my glutes were really inactive and, and weak in comparison to, um, my quads. Sure. And so I was doing a ton of stuff to like activate my glutes for when I squatted too. Yeah. Um, you know, is that, you know, the way that you guys handle things too, is you guys do assessments when somebody first comes in to try and fix movement patterns? Absolutely. Uh, Onward has a three-step process. Yeah. We're putting the fire out, we find the root cause and then long-term fix. So if someone comes in with something hot, we're going to use the hands-on stuff, the the needling, the cupping to put that fire out because you're hurting. Mm -hmm. you right. Your body feels like shit. Now it's, let's do the assessment to find root cause, whether that's a lack of mobility here, a strength deficit here. Then we start teasing that out with intentional program. We're only seeing people once a week, so we're not seeing them two or three times. Like, hey, this is tailored to you specifically. I need you to do this five minutes of work before you go do your thing at the gym, right? Then the back end of that is, okay, now we're going to start watching squatting over uh, deadlifts, cleans in the space because there's no better way for me to uh, work through that with you real time than right there in the space. Like I'll talk to people who are seeing somebody for an issue, they're a runner. I'm like, Has, have, they, uh, have they watched you run? No, they haven't. Hmm. That's interesting. Isn't that kind of like the thing that you want to Are do? Having issues. With yeah, that yeah. Like, that's what you're, that's what you're trying to do. Same. Yeah. Uh, have they watched you squat? No. Hmm. Okay. Or if you watch them air squat, it's like, have they, have they watched you squat with 315 on the bar? Yeah. Which is very different, different. from the air squat. Right. So yeah, definitely. That's like the, the quick and dirty process of onward where we're going through that and then trying to get to some of the more higher level stuff. What's, what's the, you know, most common, um, issue that you see as far as like mobility goes with people that come into you guys? Man, that's so individual to the person, uh, but probably something through the mid back thoracic spine area or the hips or ankle. For mm -hmm. sure. I was going to say hips for sure. I mean, just a, a society of sitting, right? Yeah. Hips are just yeah. super stiff, right? And we're trying to work through that, but definitely mid that, back. That's what's my hips. And, and what's yeah, I was the, looking at you, Jeff. Hey, hips, dude. right? Hips, dude. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to move. Weight Those hips don't lie squat. either. Bro. Uh, I, I'll never forget. I first started doing CrossFit, my, uh, the burpees. It was, it was genuinely difficult for me to pull my feet through. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, totally. And, um, totally. You know, just yesterday, I did, I was doing I did make you do a hundred burpees for time that one time, and you looked physically in pain. Not, <laughs> I was just like, um, but was getting up, for time. I was getting up off the ground um, by instead of like you know jumping your feet through your hands. That was a yeah. crawl. I was jumping my feet around my hands, where I'm like doing like almost like a yeah. a really embarrassing look of a split. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like a halfway split. Yeah. When I was I getting still my feet back like up, that. Kyle, what's your seven minute uh, burpees? How many are you pulling through on seven I don't minutes? Know. I have no clue. I did a hundred in like eight minutes. That's I still think really it, solid. It, That's a solid. I, I think a hundred. I think I can do a hundred and five. Does that sound right? Twenty burpees. That's a really minute? fast. That sounds moving. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle but pranks. twenty burpees a minute. I feel like it. that is. Yeah. I guess we will do it after the podcast. I don't want to. I don't want to have to. You know, I would love. We've already been talking about for CrossFit for the last for like three podcasts, but I could look it up probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dude, uh, you guys. So wait, wait, wait. Just to kind of talk about what you guys just said. So what are the downward um, issues that people have? Like when you guys are seeing that somebody has like a lack of mobility in their hi uh, in their hips, how does that present to the person? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. what's the what's the what are they coming in and complaining about if you're seeing that? Compensatory uh, movement patterns. Take someone tight hips. What is um, compensatory movement patterns for our uh, Neanderthals, like, yeah. like myself? So <laughs> think, maybe think about how, like, what a natural squat would look like. Um, and so someone with tight hips, they're trying to squat with weight down. They Maybe they barely reach parallel because that's really tight for their hips. They're probably shooting their hips out of the squat position really fast, which would put a lot of strain on their lower back. Um, so someone like that might come in with, like, some complaints of fur back pain. Yeah. Every time I squat, my back gets lit up. It feels terrible. So we watch them squat, take a look at that, maybe put some weight on the bar. Well, this is exactly where that's coming from. Um, could be something different if it's a poster chain, so anywhere calf hamstring, the, the lower back and the glutes, someone's having a problem getting uh, in a good proper position to lift a barbell correctly. Um, compensatory, again, they're probably going to shoot their hips up, put some excess of stress through the back um, or towards the knees. So you'll see faults in what we would say would be an ideal movement for that person. And that leads to overload from an area that probably shouldn't be working as hard as it is. So you're straining and that's where the strains come in. Some of it start are, for starting it off. I think something, some of, sorry, is, is some of that um, can be corrected with like foot positioning. 
Because I know like people's hips are different. There's a different, totally. um, uh, people have different. Uh, My toes are pointed out every time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. If you uh, if you got Joe and I squatting next to each other, they would look vastly different for our foot position. Yeah. What the squat would look like, um, you know, and that's going to be individualized to your anatomy yourself. Yeah, I think that's where um, coaching CrossFit, it's, it's tough because, you know, they might say, um, Jeff, keep your chest up on your squat, that sort of thing, right? Right, right. You're chest like, up. You're like, heels, how? I'm heels, trying. Like, yeah. I'd, I'd, how, how do I, I keep my know heels on the that? floor while I do that? That's impossible so then, with my heels on the floor. Then the, the trick is like, okay, if we understand some of the biomechanics, like, I'm going to give Jeff this little plate under his heels. It's going to prop him up. It's going to be easier for him to squat. But on top of that, it's like, okay, here are the things that we're going to do. So that's the modification for right now. Sure. Make your squat feel better. But here's the plan to um, open those ankles up over time because that takes months of intentional work, right? I mean, but years. Like, yeah, but in the moment, <laughs> it's like here's the here's the um, the modification to help that squat feel that much better to actually get the chest up, that sort of thing. Does that right. make sense? No, totally. Yeah, these are little ways that we can. Um, what's the word for it when we're trying to like scale something? You know, in a, in a CrossFit workout, uh, like scale, like scale is it? Yeah, <laughs> I guess that's the word. I yeah, mean, you no, got yeah. it. I'm just saying that you're just scaling these exercises. You can still do the exercise exactly. while working through exactly. those, those uh, immobile parts. It, right. How much time? Um, would you guys venture to say, like, if you had a good, like, rule of thumb, if you will, it's hard to box it, right? But totally. What kind of time would you want to give somebody a day spending uh, prehabbing these injuries, it's taking the time to stretch or, or work on mobility? How much time do you think people should dedicate to that a day? Oh, as much as necessary, as little as possible. If you're talking well about said, fitting Matthew. into people's busy lives, I mean, come on, man. I love fitness. I love working out, but my life is very busy. Um, I am not going to have the capacity to sit down for 30 minutes um, unless I get up at four in the morning to specifically do that. So yeah, I think that's where like through the intentional assessments, like here's the two things. Give me four to five minutes before you work out and that's your thing and that's it. If we bog you down with more stuff. It's just not going to happen. You know, you go, you go to PT and they give you the printed off sheet. You got 10, 12 things on there. You ain't doing shit. The but if I got one or two, okay, I can stick to that and do the that. The New thing. Heights podcast with uh, Travis and, and Jason Kelsey, they were talking about this recently. And he's like um, talking about being retired now, Jason Kelsey, right? And he's like, man, you know how fast my core went? He's like, oh my gosh. I couldn't. Right. He's like, I, I couldn't sit up, you know, using my core the other day. And he's like, because I haven't been doing anything from a exercise standpoint sure. with his core. And he's like, dude, he's like, that's crazy. And then he asked Travis what he's been doing. And Travis is like, you know, we don't stretch, dude. Right. You know, we don't stretch, dude. Right. <laughs> and, and Jason's like, well, I mean, like, you know, we, you know, he's like, I just get the glutes firing and that's about it. <laughs> just get a little, Bro, flex, get a little, takes, blood a, takes a band. I will takes say this and right. puts it on a pole. The and, best you know, players that I ever played going. football with, it was like, they did the least amount of weightlifting and the least amount of stretching. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> well, I, <laughs> those are the freaks, man. Like yeah, DK the, eating yeah, Skittles before like, the game. Yeah. You don't want to use those as the example because they're the exceptions, not the rule. Right. But um, I also I want, didn't play with any. Well, I played with one NFL player, but like most of them, they were just good for the you know people they were with. I'm sure NFL players. Not, like you hear Christian McCaffrey is like an absolute psycho, psycho about that kind of stuff. Well, you think about youth here too, man. Right? You're, you're talking like this is these guys were 21 years old. Yeah. Right. They're still young. Yeah. You know, and so like you can get away with a lot with youth, right? Right. And not the years of of miles on the tires that they're going through. And exactly. so it's like Travis Kelsey's, you know, um, you know, time in the, uh, in the trainer room is probably 10 times what it once was when right. he was 22. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, did you guys he, notice that they got an F on their training room? Did I you guys did hear about notice that? that. I felt bad about that. It was two years I did in a row. Too. I was like, God dang, man. Like, can, what the heck? Can There's we a not? black eye on, uh, on the chief's organization when it comes to the training room. And then you hear recently that a uh, Bengals player, uh, or was it? No, I'm sorry. I think um, it was. I think it's just the facilities there. I think the, it, was the Van, it was Van Noy. It was Van Noy. It was Van Noy and the Ravens. He was. He was. He was complaining about the time it took for a doctor to get to him after breaking something. He broke yeah. his nose, I guess, and so yeah. it took him over twelve minutes to get to him. It's like, like twelve minutes, pretty decent time. Yeah, where was this guy coming from? Like, I also read <laughs> that it was a specialist. He was waiting on a specialist to get to him. And it's like the nose doctor, man, you got to chill. Like he's going to be there. You know, he's yeah, not like in the training in the room. stands. You're not yeah. getting stands watching the game. You're not getting a new face mask. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's, it's, like, it's I interesting know. what his expectations would have been agreed. Right. And it's so 12 he, minutes was not good for him. Dog, yeah. dog and uh, dog in the chief's training room in public over that. But um, just wondering if you guys have any insight on that. I mean, you guys have obviously done a lot of athletes. What could give somebody, a, Ooh. yeah, look at that. Yeah. The worst. Andy's of, got an A. The 30. worst of the Good NFL. Good job, buddy. Ownership. The nutritionist and Ouch. dietitian, thirty first. Just for fun's sake, uh, just know that we used to give all of the uh, 
uh, nutrition consultation uh, advice to Harrison Bucker, as right. well as uh, Winchester there for a minute. How about Big I, Red, though? Coming I, that's first. why they're an F at that's Kansas right. City, because they're going to us. Are, are they, give, they give the ownership an F- minus because they're tired of what's-her-name taking all the pictures on the sideline. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Influencers in yeah, the wild. Gracie Hunt. Yeah, Gracie I'm, Hunt. They're psyched about that. Yeah. I'm sure it was more of the uh, the fact that, I don't know if you guys know this, the locker rooms at Arrowhead are, are gorgeous. Yeah. The, the locker rooms at their practice facility don't even have backs on the chairs. Really? And so that was actually like a huge deal. They, they all had stools, right? Back's going to get tight. And so they were like, can we at least get a back on our chair? That's why we're in front of our locker. And so they actually, they all got those this year. And we get like, some ergonomics. He's like, uh, D plus now, not enough. You guys you win gotta, another Super Bowl. Maybe we'll get you guys like even better chairs. Yeah, this is back to the, uh, this is a business. My, my assumption is the leverage of why would we build a brand new practice facility for you guys if we're moving? Yeah, possible. Fair enough. Yeah. Can you guys... Uh, you guys talk about like myofascial release and like what specifically that is and why it would be good for people to incorporate that into a mm. pre pre workout, or if it is good to t- keep it in pre workout, or should you do a post workout, or when should say you? that word three times fast, Kyle? What pre workout? No, myo what? Myofascial release. Myo who? Myofascial release, dude. Duh. Just working those tissues, baby. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you loosening it up? Referring to like foam roll body work stuff. Yeah. So. Um, if something is, or t- like, he, 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 this is just or my gun. Yeah. yeah. That's your thing. Uh, yeah. I don't want to roll around on some foam. If I got a gun, I just hit my booty cheeks with that gun. Yeah. And it looks mm. cooler, right? Yeah. Certainly more uh, convenient. Yeah. So, I mean, you, I would look at both like foam roller or massage gun, pretty much accomplishing the same thing of stimulating an area on your body. Probably going to bring in some blood flow probably going to provide a different sensory input. So if it's tight, it feels super sore. You're changing that local environment uh, for that tissue. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would, I would say typically that's a pretty low hanging fruit. It's easy to do, but it's probably not as valuable as you agree. think. Yeah. Like if I'm trying to there a gun, my hips, I don't own a there gun. Mm-hmm. I'd probably just rather have Matt drop some needles in my hip and let me ride that for 20 minutes. I'm going to feel way better than Ooh. just doing you know, the gun every night yeah. hoping that it feels better the next day. What, what See, you, I, for me, it's, it's a, it's a mobility thing. It feels like it, it increases mobility. Is by, there, is by there blood research? Flow, does it not? I mean, by blood flow, they bring more blood flow. Like you said, Matt, is that not increasing the mobility immediately from that? I, if, if I had to break it down, like, no, cause you're not actually stretching the tissue at in range and like scene changes. You guys are blowing my mind right now. Saying like scene, throwing away my a, massage, gun. a true change in like the <laughs> tissue length and flexibility. It's changing your perception of what's going on in that area. So uh-huh. it might feel like you have better range. Yeah, you're getting like short term benefits of like being able to stretch that tissue further, right? For that 30 to 60 minute workout. Yeah. And then following that, it probably feels somewhat normal again. You're like, okay, that tightness is back. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's not. It doesn't stay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's just yeah. trying it's to get me lived. through a workout. <laughs> right, right. But, it's a Band-Aid, not a solvent. Yeah, 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 that's right. what it sounds like. But that blood flow response that you get if you foam roll something or you hit the gun on it, you could accomplish that in several other ways that are probably more dynamic, probably more intentional. Related. If you're going in for squat day and hips are feeling cranky or stiff and you're like, I would like to blast these with the gun, there are guarantee you several different ways to accomplish that blood flow response that are more dynamic and movement Mm -hmm. based that would prep you better for squatting. See, typically what I do is I'll do like a, um, like Theragun and then I'll do like banded hip mobilizations or something along those lines because it feels like it makes, like I said, it just feels like, Oh, I'm getting loose now. I'm ready to get into a a hip circle. You're thinking like a hip circle kind of band. Yeah. Yeah. Or I mean, basically hooking it to like a, um, Oh, like a rig. Yep. We talk about this sometimes of like um, in the saturated industry of fitness rehab, that sort of thing. Everyone's trying to do all the prehab, the rehab. And it's like, next thing you know, 20 minutes has gone by and you haven't done anything. I think there's maybe the one or two things specific to Kyle or Jeff, but then no better way to warm up for the squad is going through the squat pattern Mm -hmm. in some fashion, right? Like, I think it's easy to get bogged down with like all the bands and stuff. And it's like, you know, they probably just squat a little bit. You know what, things, I, you know what makes me think about, dude? It's like, I, let's say we go back to like high school days, right? And you're like getting started with training for a lot of people. That's their, that's their, where they, you know, they started a sport. Yeah. Got into the weight room for the first time. And it's like, how did he warm up for bench? It's like, well, he started off with just the, the bar. bar. 225. <laughs> exactly. if you're not a bitch. Yeah, right. Kyle, throw, you throw on two <laughs> wheels. You yeah, gotta yeah, make sure yeah, you do it slabs. for 10 before you, yeah. 
Right. No, but I'm don't saying put like, on any 25s. None of that in here. I'm dude, just saying, like, dude, it, when my dad told me how to bench, he would play, never, play, play. never touch the fives or tens. I'm like trying to stair step it up. He's like, "What are we doing? What are we doing? 45s only? Can't do that? Yeah. I'm like, Dad, I weigh it's 185 right now. You're yeah, like let's go. Guy. Let's go. Hey, Come on. Let you touch a 25. Your dad's 250. No. Your dad's a he was. jack monster. He's like, what are we doing with these 25s? Like, I thought it was. <laughs> we're, we're adding 90 pounds 20. to the bar minimum yeah. every time. place. Get the minimum. The big place. Crushing your sternum. Oh, I love that. I will say like. With overhead mobility stuff, I did. I I would go through a lot of things trying to improve my overhead mobility, but the only thing that seemed like it helped it over time was doing overhead lifts. Right. <laughs> it made such a big difference on like my mid back, you know, mobility and being able to go overhead and my shoulder mobility. Totally. And um, I don't know if there is exercises that can replace that. Well, that's right. To circle back to the idea of like the ankle thing with the plates, it's like here's the way we're gonna do. It. But I tell people when I'm coaching. They're asking me about a hip thing. I'm like, dude, the best thing you can do is keep showing up to class and challenging your body through that range of motion. I guarantee you that's going to do more than if you just did this one exercise that I told you and I never see you in the gym again. Mm -hmm. If you keep showing up three to five days a week, like you're exposing your body to that deeper squat. And over time, all of a sudden it's like, dude, your squat looks awesome because you've been consistent in the gym. And that's like the main key, right? Yeah. I also think it's never one or the other, right? This is me. I'm not a uh, physical therapist or a doctor, but it feels to me like when you, um, get stronger, it's easier to your, your movement patterns get better too. Absolutely. Especially overhead yeah, for yeah. sure. It's just a strength thing Yeah, because everybody lives their life 90 degrees and below. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. You get stronger, your capacity to handle any sort of stress, it's going to dramatically improve. Mm-hmm. So at, your movement patterns will naturally deviate to a much more efficient way of moving your body around. Yeah. I want to continue to walk you guys through just some different, you know, fads that have been out there and you guys talk about that saturation it also just adds to the cloudiness. You know, our our business is truly um, almost been built on that lack of sureness that most customers feel by not by just having too many options and not really knowing what's specialized for them. Mm-hmm. So customers will come in and just say, like, what do you guys know about this? Garcinia, Shake weight. Garcinia Cambogia, you know, right. and stuff like that. So um, you got we talked about the Theraguns. We've talked about cold plunges, which has obviously been very popular. Um, there's therapy or I'm sorry, there's um, sauna and then there's like infrared sauna. Right. So tell me about lacrosse balls and should I be using a lacrosse ball or should I just, you know, just use the Theragun? Is, is all of this just like, dude, just stretch on the, on the ground. <laughs> Where do you guys place the lacrosse ball in the hierarchy? Um, I would say that falls into a very similar category as like the foam roller or the, the gun. It's pretty, it's going to be a short term help for if you got something that's tight. Most people like to roll the lacrosse ball like on the shoulder blade. Area. Sure. Like, oh, oh you know. man, if you got a knot in your back, <laughs> right? Oh, um, it's good. What about but, your question mark deal, Kyle? It, it's good. It's the <laughs> yeah. same thing. You know, the about it's the same thing. Is that thing yeah. You get that thing, dude. You I don't know, but the, that's the, in every like hospital. He owns, hey, it. Clink, hey, he owns it. For listen, sure. guys, I've had some very bad run ins with boner neck, and you guys know what this is where you can't <laughs> turn your head like more than this, and you get that lacrosse ball or you get that little hook thing going on there. Who feel like a new man, you know? So, uh, Kyle Super. sits on a donut in his truck when he drives. <laughs> it's a it's a back pillow, Jeff. It's a back pillow. Don't try to make it sound cool. It's yeah. a donut. That's all. <laughs> if I if I, <laughs> I'm saying this man, it does he, make he me works feel really hard to be able to work hard. Yeah, yeah I know, sense. right? Yeah, totally. he works really hard so he can work hard. Uh, so it like they're they feel great in the moment, but they are not doing anything other than giving you a different perception of what's going on in that area in the moment. If you get a knot, you get something that's tight. You're talking about that issue in the neck. You can't turn it right. It's a sign. You don't have to call it the the, the, the technical term that I use. (laughs) The the, the textbook uh, definition, sorry. Uh, Very, very, very high level (laughs) medical (laughs) medical (laughs) classification of that problem. You thank Louis for that. That's the one that he coined that term. I believe that was some. some, uh, I was like, dude, my neck's all messed up. (laughs) The old Greek, you know, uh, terminology for it, I believe. It is. Um, but if you go back, like, wh- what is that te- like in your body? If you're feeling something like that, what's that telling you that it's telling you that there's a, a impairment or a weakness that's going on there that you're compensating around that traditionally responds best to actually getting stronger and loading it in the right way. Right. So you get that posterior back of the shoulder, not that after pull up day or some sort of arm day and you want to roll it out. Um, I get, there's definitely things that should be part of that five minute window of like, here's my specialized accessory work that I can start loading this muscle and tendon tissue to make it feel much better actually. So you don't feel like you need to roll out on a ball all the time. Right. I got one for you guys. The, the, um, 
Have you seen the basically the things you can wear on your chest that pull your shoulders back? You can wear all day that like are supposed to make your posture better and help with like um, shoulder pain over time. Or they also have them for your like feet. So if you have plantar fasciitis, you put them on your feet when you're sleeping and it holds your holds your toe back. What do you guys think about those? Which is basically like holding your body in a better position over a long. Just really get into time. those feet ones. That sounds like a great thing to have. Yeah, like this. Yeah, the back brace. I just went to the hard or the auto shop to uh, recycle some oil. Make sure you recycle your dirty oil when you change your uh, car oil there. But they had that back <laughs> brace in there. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. But again, it's just slapping a Band-Aid on. Yeah. Um, the lack of strength. Right. Because the reality is that there. stuff is... Oh, because it, it's basically like a... a, it's a crutch. Yeah, yeah. It's a crutch. But you're stronger. Quite literally a crutch for your back. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, but it, we crutch it out because building a strong back is hard. Right. It's really hard. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot of time and dedication and intentionality. Right? I mean, it's just... What's your, what's your pounds off the ground? It's hard. Anything else so you, you think, want to be intentional? You about think like deadlifts yeah. is the way to do that then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Most uh, back pain is because your back is just too weak, mm-hmm. right? And most gin pop people. Well, yeah. I a little feel, different when I feel you feel attacked. A little right. different when you pull like a <laughs> 500 pound deadlift, like you're pretty strong, but your gin pop person mm-hmm. who's, they were moving over the weekend and they had a back tweak, your back's just not strong enough. Who have you ever heard say, you know what? My back is just. It's just too strong. Yeah. I don't know what's with my back. It's too strong. It's not. Yeah. Back is, that's why like in every onward, you'll see that uh, reverse hyper. You know what that is? Uh-huh. Like we're kicking the legs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every onward has one because it's like one of the better tools to build the back up. So it's, it's kind of like a hamstring Louis, curl. Louis, Louis Simmons. Or like a GH, uh, like West side barbell. Yeah. West side barbell. Yeah. 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 If you, it, it's Louis Simmons created it and it was one because he couldn't, of all time. he couldn't figure out way, um, how to fix his lower back. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he couldn't do loaded things. And so he would do that and it would basically, I guess, I mean, you guys could probably explain this better. Does it stretch it out your, your lumbar spine at the same time as it's strengthening in it? Yeah, it, it loads. Uh, there's different types of muscle contractions like concentric, eccentric, if, if people are familiar with those terms. Um, I basically call the reverse hyper. It's the bicep curl of the lower back. Yeah. You are moving weight up and down through a full range of motion from flexion into extension. Mm-hmm. You You're getting low through the full range. range. Yeah, you just get this massive low back. What are you doing Pump on the reverse hyper it. right now, weight wise? Ooh, man, if if it's like a volume based workout, I'll throw about one eighty on there. Dude, um, just ripping some reverse hypers. If if I'm going for like pure strength, I'll easily throw two twenty five, two fifty up there as some accessory work. God, it's harder than you think. Let's go. I put like a twenty five on there. I was like, ooh, yeah, you know, dude, already making like your that. dad sad right there. Twenty fives? What are you yeah. doing, Jeff? Twenty fives only. He's not gonna listen to this. <laughs> what? What? Uh, <laughs> So should I be, uh, you know, I have a bulging disc in my back. I've had di- disc issues in my back for a long time. Should I be doing the reverse hyper? 100%. Okay. All it right. should be a well. part of your program mm-hmm. uh, that you are f- comfortable with doing consistently. Yeah. You know, I've got another case study for you guys where a really good mm-hmm. friend of mine um, who's been lifting for 10 plus years, um, he's not huge uh, amount of weight on the bar guy but absolutely makes it to the gym five days a week, mm-hmm. lifts, lifts heavy, has great shape, but he's, um, he just got diagnosed with degenerative disc disease. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is where that hospital stuff comes in, right? Absolutely. Cause they told him, yeah, stop lifting weights. Yeah. They told him to they stop did. lifting weights. And so he's like, I'm doing more body weight stuff Ooh. this last six months, which is not to hate on or anything. You're like, sure, I guess. But I'm like, you know, he's, you know, it's a really big part of his life, right? Yeah. And he's just hit 40. He's thinking, you know, man, I got a lot of years left and I want to make sure that I'm active and I want to make sure that I'm, you know, I'm able to pick up my kids and yeah. all these things. And so he's really just been told, you know, you got to, you got to cut out that lifting for a while. What are your guys' thoughts on that? This is about to be the soapbox talk right here. Let's do you it. Go down, down the rabbit should hole. Should you go first or? Um, you guys, you guys gave a little bit of a chuckle for our listeners to the gen- degenerative disc the disease. DJD. Talk to us about it. Does this seem like a more common? Uh, is this like a more common diagnosis oh, recently? For sure. It's for sure. Uh, it is a part of a label of the medical system. Yeah. Uh, which kind of which part of what differentiates onward is we are separating ourselves uh, as a specialty clinic that helps people understand how to be fit, train, lift weights and not worry about like a, a label, the diagnosis. Well, right. The biggest problem I feel like, you know, we have is as individuals, you know, in society, as we know it today is that this is just my assumption. Please correct me and edit where I'm off, but where he's going to get help, his insurance is covering. Right. My thought is you guys probably don't take insurance. Right. He's and, that, he's and that's where it gets into like the, is our medical system really helping us? Right. He's entering the, the MIC 
the medical industrialized complex. He's entering into this machine that just churns and burns and uh, doesn't give a lot of clear answers and creates a lot of fear. So someone goes in, they get the imaging done. They're like, oh, Kyle, your back is your back is bad. You better is put it those weights down. disintegrating? Because right, I feel sex. like it sometimes. Sounds right. like it's degenerative. <laughs> and it, it creates nothing but fear. And then yeah. it creates yeah. this idea of like fragility that I can't challenge my body anymore. I guarantee if you uh, x-rayed my back right now, they would find some stuff in there and I feel just fine, mm -hmm. right? So you create this fear. You create this pushing people away from challenging their body, pushing fitness, How pushing many stories strength. have we seen, dude, where people are like, I was told I would never walk again. Dude, totally. Look at me now, and they're like sprinting. Absolutely. And you're like, man, I just, I mean, I'm not trying to be a smart ass whatsoever. I might sound very ignorant saying this statement, but the amount of times I've heard, doctor told me I'd never walk again. Doctor told me I'd never lift again. Doctor told me I'd never play this sport again. And it's just like every single one of them are playing. Exactly. Exactly. Feels like it. But no, there's no, hundreds of thousands dude. on the other side that aren't walking. Uh, po possibly. <laughs> but Kyle, it's like we, we spend so much time with people that are active, right? I mean, like every single customer that comes in typically is, a f is somebody who is at all, um, you know, is interested in fitness and is doing something intentional to move their body right. every day. And I have yet to have had a customer of mine tell me, you know, I used to be able to, 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 be, to, to move and now I'm not allowed to. Right. You know, and they just stopped. Like right. it's, it's, you that's just, a common message uh, in not to like just rank down on the entire medical system, but that's a common message. If you've got pain, you go see a provider, um, someone from an authoritative medical position will tell you like, Hey, you should, then they give you the good that. pills, you know, here, yeah. take we've these had, pills. <laughs> we've had Dr. We've had Dr. Kyle Gillette on the podcast and uh, we have a tremendous amount of respect for him, but I'd love to ask him just any kind of, you know, MD to be like, when when is it appropriate to tell someone that? Because I just feel like that message gets told to people totally so often to people who are young. Creates fear. So let me give you the rundown of like we talk about um, where you start, where you're going to finish, right? And this is where we're talking about before the pod about the education discrepancy of where PT can come into the fold for somebody. So someone injures their back, um, thirty five year old male lifting. They're probably going to go to urgent care because they don't know where else to go. They have their insurance. They're going to go do that thing. Sure. And then likely take an x-ray or something like that. Going to get the prescription, so on and so forth. Let's say his, hey, make sure you stop doing everything too. Just stop. Cut it out. That's the next step, right? Right. So they got their, they went into urgent care. They got right. their pain meds. Got the pain meds. They got said, the, hey. the x-ray. That sort of thing. If this doesn't, if this doesn't get better, come back. We'll do the next thing, which is probably MRI, right? And they're in a ton of pain. Like it. Yeah, it doesn't feel good in that moment. Right. He, he went through all of this. Yeah. They're in a ton of pain. There's there's fear on board. And no one helped guiding them where to go. So they're like, okay, I'm just going to rest. I don't know when to go back. This sort of thing. It doesn't get better. Say so you go back to the MRI. They see something even worse. And then worst case scenario, you have some sort of surgery or an injection, whatever. Right. Just kind of lost in the sauce. And now there's like that lack of confidence in your back, your lack of confidence in your body's ability to do the thing that you've always done. Right. Um, versus... Maybe someone comes into an onward style where they hurt their back. They shoot, shoot me a text. I hey, come in tomorrow. Let's, let's do the thing. So we go back to the process, right? One, we're going to put the fire out, help him feel better. Two, I'm probably going to help decrease fear. Like, dude, I've seen this a million times. You're going to be fine. We're going to get better. And then here's what we're going to do in the meantime until I see you next week, which is going to be um, pushing some fluids, right? Get on the echo bike, get your heart rate up, right? Work that inflammation out. And we start laying out the plan. And then you're going to show them how to get back into the gym, right? Where this one person over here is kind of lost, wandering, trying to figure out where to go. Meanwhile, we're coming here, addressing the fire, reducing fear, giving you the plan. And this is the way. Right? They, they actually never left the gym. Right. They never left the gym. Part of our care and then like what kind of helps sets onward apart is like we're using the gym to maximize your fitness while we're managing your symptoms. I love right. that. So they, so they, that's what you're saying. The one-stop shop. It's like you never have to leave. It's like right. the, that whole experience that Joe's describing. It's like. Yeah, you came and you saw Joe, and he's telling you, here's how we're going to manage your back pain, but you're still in there crushing workouts that are totally tolerable and actually making you feel better at the same time. See, because when, when, I, when I originally injured my back, I, I talked to our friend JP Price. Shout out JP, good friend. And um, he's, back surgery. He, he's literally had the worst, the worst issues with backs ever. He's also squatted 1,000 pounds in, in uh, wow. competition. So he's, wow. uh, he's done a little in bit sleeves. more. Yeah. <laughs> It done a little bit more than uh, That's it. I have. Just it, leaves. Just and leaves. Um, he sent me to the sports uh, medicine doctor at KU. 
And when I went and saw him, he basically, he ran a couple tests on me. He did an x-ray. He said, I want to make sure that you don't have a fracture in, in one totally. of your vertebrae. And uh, he did a couple of tests on me and he goes, eh, well, he's like, you know, I don't think you have a ruptured disc. You know, I don't think you have anything that would be worth, you know, he's like, he was basically like, are you still working out? You know, tell me what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. And then from there, he was like, honestly, man, he's like, I give you an MRI. I feel like I already know what that MRI looks like because right. I deal with people like you all the time. Um, he's like, you could just save the money and not get the MRI and just go do physical therapy. And this is, you know, these are the people that I'd recommend as far as physical yeah. therapy goes. Um, you know, and I felt like that experience when I talk to people that also have back issues, I feel like my experience is, is a lot different than their experience because I feel like most doctors do the opposite of that. Where they start doing the medical workup <laughs> right now. Yeah. They're like, you need an MRI, you need, you know, um, you know, we might have to cut on you, you might, you know, all these things. <laughs> and and, and here, I, ooh, it's, it's hard, fear, it's though, hard to tell if, if it's just because my back injury wasn't as severe as a lot of people's back injury, but you know, it has been an ongoing thing for well, me over time. But my real question about what you're saying is this is like a real fear for us who don't like hospitals, who have that same kind of fear about the MIC, which you call medical industrial complex. That's it. You got it. So I would fear that similar to maybe like a female when they're getting their car looked at, yeah. right? I'm like, they look at Kyle and they might say, well, that dude, that dude's been lifting a long time. Mm -hmm. That guy, probably knows a little bit more than most sure like everybody every time i walk in the room i'm asking like I, this could be pure speculation but you see my point where it's yeah, like that there's that, that an doctor, education discrepancy that doctor sees kyle and sees kyle's been lifting a long time and says i'm probably not going to stop you anyway so sure. let me just give you the what i would really do if you were like my son or something you know someone they really know well yeah versus like the let's uh well we're gonna have to do an mri we're gonna have to, you know and it's like are you doing all of that because you feel like they really need it or because you think that you could easily get them to say yes to all these things and turn it into a profit yeah i think it's a it's a system thing i think there's a lot of really good doctors with no malicious intent but the system itself doesn't support the the service or the care that people need to really dive deep into stuff where in onward we have the time to walk alongside you through the thing right through the, we're gonna have some good we're gonna have some bad where do we go from here? And if something was really malicious and it just wasn't getting better, okay, now where do we go? Let me help get you to the right person. I think that's where we're just where uh, systemically, how do we support the best care? And that's why we're doing onward the way that we do it, right? One-on-one, um, -on -one, going for an hour. He already mentioned going the cash route where it's like, we can just do this as we need to do it, just straight up, right? Whatever you need, we're going to figure out a way to do that. If someone were to... Um like just like in case of Kyle, right? Or in case of my buddy's situation, what would someone like that expect to spend on like a monthly basis to get that kind of once a week, um, keep you guys keeping an eye on them? What's like a good, right. you know, a fair number, yeah. you know, a range maybe even. If it comes down to like, if it's just once a week, um, then it'd be, you know, like four or 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. If it's just like coming in once a month, it's going to be like 150 bucks. Yeah. You know, and, and, and there's actually fair. results, you know, like you're, you are going to understand there's like, we're tracking results. There's a game plan on what we're doing. The three things, the putting the fire out, right? Right. What's Find the root, root cause, cause, root cause, and then the long-term long -term fix. Okay. Those three, can I expect that coming once a month? Absolutely. Yeah. It, that's, that's a combination of like, if you've been training, it's hard to consistently train in the gym hard and not have stuff pop up. Ooh, that's tight today, man. I've been bench pressing the last two weeks, just not feeling great. If you're at the one month checkpoint, like with us, well, you've already done the workup of four to six visits. We've kind of addressed the issue. We already have a working, trusting relationship. Now I know what's going on with you grossly. I know what activities you're into. So that touch point is going to be able to be maximized more, add more value because we've already built a level of trust on the front end of that. A lot of, a lot of people aren't going to come in at the once a month to begin with. There's going to be an issue on board that we're going to address more consistently once a week it's for more a, of a transition weeks. then right it's a transition that, maybe right. that maybe maybe a couple times in the beginning a, a week I, right. or well, three I, times a week whatever and then it transitions right. off to once a month because it goes maybe. back to the idea of like just stay plugged in with us like you right. feel great you're still challenging yourself to stay plugged in that's that's the thing is like when i was going to physical therapy it's like i could do the exercises on my own but for some reason when i was going there i was getting more out of it Totally. And I don't know, it, you know, it's just probably like the, the pressure of somebody else being there and like, you know, basically overseeing everything. But after a while, I kind of got used to it and it was like, I, you know, I had, I had the same standards outside of the physical therapy as I did, you know, inside it. So. Well, I think that goes back to the idea of like using the lacrosse ball and that sort of thing. Like you've got the exercise piece down, but then there's the body work aspect. Yeah. 
like I said, the lacrosse ball, just let me drop some needles in there, and I guarantee it's going to feel a lot better than trying to do the lacrosse ball every day. Yeah, I don't, you, I don't like needles, bro. Dude. Are you really afraid on, of needles, dude? Kyle. I'm not. I'm Are not. Are you actually afraid of needles? I'm actually oh not. Oh, my gosh. I remember I got I got needled in my uh, in my quad one time, and uh, it was it was not a not a fun experience. Dude, I'll needle myself at the house, man. Really? Groin, front yeah. of the hip, for oh, sure. Just depends on the oh, on the problem. Groin. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. I needed it after heavy um, uh, heavy snatch. Yeah, because you're catching it so deep, right? Trying to pull it up back up. Oh yikes! Yeah, yeah. My yeah. body is getting. We, yesterday we did a, a workout that was. It, it was ring muscle ups and, and squat. Yes. What was your time? Yes. Uh, eight minutes. Did and you go 135? Uh-huh. Solid. But my freaking, my freaking body hurts. So I can work on the rings. Yeah. But it's like that workout, when I saw it, I was like, my body's going to hurt tomorrow. <laughs> I just look at workouts <laughs> like that. And I'm just like, nah, I don't know. Something are somewhere. You, are you scaling yet on those kind of things? Or are you just saying like, send it? What do you mean? You see the workout and you're like, my body's going to hurt if I do that. That's where I would are say. Are you putting yourself in the line of fire there? Or do you say, I'm going to scale? No, I mean, as I'm getting older, I'm I'm way less inclined. Like, if there's a max out on, like, a clean and jerk, I don't think I'll ever do 100% effort in a clean and jerk ever again in my life. The target I, changes. I, yeah. I can get to, like, you know, 250, you know, 265 or something and be happy and be like, if I had to, I could probably, you know, <laughs> yeah, push I'm up sorry. to, like, 280. I need to save my family's life on a clean yeah. and jerk. Yeah. But that's I where I would it. say, like, <laughs> as much as you train, you shouldn't have to to look at a workout and think that yeah right that's where i would say kyle i think we could do something to where you don't yeah, have you, that I, thought I, when I you're looking at something probably so because my knees are aching today or uh-huh. it comes back to like maybe your expectations you look at the workout you're like i'm gonna hurt tomorrow and then you can actually like get some feedback 24 40 hours later am i hurting like i thought i was or it's even worse yeah you know and then are you is your training for the next seven days going to be really limited or do you actually know how to calm something down if it flared back up on you? Yeah, I don't I don't uh, dial back my training typically ever. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of deal with the aches. The e- you know, like today we did a ton of running. And uh, I was just kind of like, no, nah, my you, body hurts. You go with the nooners <laughs> yeah. at noon? The noon. You go with the boys? Yeah. yeah. I got a question. This is, this is a good one for all of us because we were all participating in this. Um, you know, just last week. Um, we were at the Memorial stair climb at Arrowhead stadium. Yeah. Shout out Lake street wellness. For awesome that event. On, including us in there. Fantastic event. Um, uh, yeah, we loved it, man. It was a great time. And so I was going to say, um, you know, I'm not, a, you know, I'm active every day. Um, you know, I'm not, um, I don't know. I guess I'm not like a stranger to climbing stairs, not a big yeah. deal, but, uh, I will say that going down the stairs presented a whole new part of that that no one really thought about i felt like for the most part that going yeah. down the stairs is going to be as tough as did it you was think about just so many d- times. doing the hook and just holding your legs and rolling down the stairs oh, man you know what if that, that would have saved so much time heaven forbid right <laughs> you know those knees started barking at you on the way down huh? my gosh dude fire. uh yeah and then like uh i have um i live downtown we don't you know if you live downtown you don't have a lot of yard Sure. And so you have to build up versus out. So I have a three story house, but it's narrow, like yeah. shotgun style, right? Yeah. So I have 50 stairs in my house. And so, like, just to get to the place where I want to relax, I have to climb 50 steps. Yeah. And going down the steps, the, you know, not the day after, right? But once the DOMS set in the delayed onset muscle soreness, did I say that right? Yep, yes, sir. All right, just throwing that vocab term That's out right. there. Yeah. Come on, flex. Come on, uh, I got the MIC. Well, I got the DOMS on there. <laughs> Look at him, he's all proud of himself. Yeah, dude. Uh, not so, my facial release, but well. <laughs> That's right, that's right. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm walking down the steps, and I'm, like, legitimately thinking that my legs are just going to buckle, right? Yeah. Were you guys, is there anything like something like when people are really just like, Hey, I'm going to do a novelty style workout, right? For something. What can someone do in that situation outside of stretch? What's another good way that we could help ourselves by not having that pain where it's like one workout can knock you out for a week this week, for example, this Saturday, you guys could give me some kind of a prehab situation of what I can prepare myself for. I'm doing a dry try at Orange Theory. Oh, well, oh right. we'll Joe, be there. Joe's going to be there. Yeah, hell yeah. I'm di- which uh, which studio? Uh, Naw Hills over okay. there, 95th and Knoll. Maybe I'll sign up at that one. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a downtown Crossroads guy, but um, I'm going to do 3.1 miles right on the mm-hmm. tread, and then I'm going to do I think it's 2,000 meters on the row, and then 300 body weight reps of some sort. But yeah. I, don't, I don't know. There's probably going to be burpees included. I don't yeah, know. I don't know other, what that all what is. the other exercises are going to be. But you got to do those and like. Man, I've done, I did 3.1 last week just to like prepare myself there. Mm-hmm. I've done 8,000 me- or 2,000 meters. Yep. Took me like eight minutes, which is like embarrassing number, but <laughs> uh, my hips 
kill on yeah. a rower. A yeah. rower kill. On Get the knees up towards that chest, right? I mean, dude, I'm doing the straight, like knees out here completely when <laughs> Got I go that down. that butterfly, baby. 100%. Yeah. So when I'm getting it, it's like, what dude, can I possibly do if you did 2,000 meters in eight minutes, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. yeah it's wow. a solid time. All right. It's good pace. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, like two, I was two going, minute five hundred meters. I, I mean, they're water rowers, so I don't know what the conversion is versus like a concept two. But I don't know that either, to be honest with you. And it's the hardest part. I have to do it barefoot. My shoes don't fit in there. Really? I was like, I don't know what you call those, like the sleeves or whatever. Yeah. That's Dear just, God, they let you put those mutant feet into their rowers like putting that. Putting two cinder just put blocks. The paws on there, huh? Sick. What size shoes are you? It's not that. It's how wide my feet are. Oh. And, uh, you know, I mean, like, we don't need to bore the listeners on my feet shape. but uh, Feet are just disgusting. Straight up, I just imagine cinder blocks. One, yeah. dude, uh, this one small side story. Me and Kyle were getting our boots fitted once. We went and got some cool, fun, custom-fitted boots. Yeah. And this old timer, this guy had been making boots for like 40 years. And he he's <laughs> like, I've seen every foot on earth. He goes, but what are these? <laughs> <laughs> he like looks up, like it's really skeptical. Like he was the dude from uh, like Back to the Future, the doc. And yeah. he's like, I've. It's been quite some time since I've seen a foot like this. <laughs> it's been 20 years. Yeah, he's like, he's like, kid, I was like, uh, let me call my dad. And he, he, he gave me his feet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeff was so pumped. He's like, listen, dude, I told you my feet are weird. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So I told you. I've been giving Kyle the foot excuse for a long time. Yeah. I once did a half marathon with him where my foot literally got a stress fracture in it from wearing a pair of shoes. Jeez. And he's like, dude, just come on. And I'm like, my foot's broken. Yeah. Literally. So anyways. <laughs> Um, what could someone do for this prehab for this dry dry? <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you think is going to be burning the most after for yourself? Sound like the knees, his Dude, lungs, back hips, are <laughs> <the best. Yeah. laughs> lungs are fine. I can I can create my own pace. It's not the feet. <laughs> yeah. I would tell you um, hips, hips, and um, hips and like calves. My calves are tight all the time. I'm like a toe walker, right? Yeah. Um, hamstrings, everything, honestly, you know, Kyle has told me like just ankle mobility sure, all the way up, yeah. right? Just starting there because that's off. Then your calves are off. Now your hips are off. Now yeah. your knees are off, you know, all these things. Um, and my mobility is pretty terrible. And I mean, like when I say my, my mobility in the form of, if I'd say I'm sitting on the ground and I put my feet out in front of me, I can't hold that with no hands on the ground for very long because oh, I'm like, like with your legs out straight. Trying that's to right. Sit. Yeah, that's right. Um, like it's more pain in my hamstrings than it is anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. I sympathize uh-huh. with you. I got poor mobility my whole life. Mm-hmm. So you want something? Couldn't to even do register on the sit and reach, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't so. even touch the box, dude. I've heard. <laughs> okay, that's a zero. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right uh, start, Jeff. No, go. No, I said you can start. Go well, ahead. Why are you Jeff. falling backwards? Better Jeff. luck next year. <laughs> go ahead and start, Jeff. Uh, no, you're. Pa- why aren't you going? Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is me going. And I go, yeah. All right. Well, you're not presidential yeah. this year. Um, so something to help you in four days is what we're talking about here, right? Mm-hmm. Four days, Everything, dude. Dude. Four days to get mobile. Let's yeah. do four this. Days. Yeah. I think a couple of things. One, I, I love when someone gives me the benchmark. I want to do this race in eight, 10, 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. I think the thing about four like endur- four days, <laughs> endurance sports is that the, the heart and lungs come around faster than the, the, the joints and the tissues do. Like, dude, my heart feels good. My wind feels good, but my knees and my, my quads are still aching. And those take mm-hmm. just longer to come back around. So that's where we go into like the strength stuff. But you mentioned something as far as stretching. That's like my other soapbox. Like most folks just like stop stretching, start loading. Right. If you, someone will tell me, yeah, I've been stretching, stretching. How long have you been stretching? Years. I'm like, it's probably time to do something different. We probably, and usually it's load. Right. I mean, like add some weight to those movements. You're right. Saying. Okay. Right. I think about like what you said, sitting with your legs straight, trying to hold yourself up sort of thing. Uh, probably for that cramping in the front of your hips. Cramping is usually a sign of weak muscles. And I bet the front of your hips, I won't say hip flexor, but just front of your hips are probably not as strong as they could be. The psoas. Right. That's one of them. Man, what's tight. up? Yeah. You want tight. a job? Now he's oh, flexing man. here. He's coming up with other terms. I'm, I'm, t- what, what, I'm just tight as shit there in the psoas. You know? What do we need to get him on as far as... Uh, I've, been in a lot, I've been in a lot of podcasts. As yeah, far as exercises, <laughs> should, should he be doing hip thrusts? Or what should he be doing? Um, That's a good should, question. It, yeah. it sounds like you should be loading your posterior chain through full range of motion. The one thing I never do. All um, right. He yeah. has that's, no it's ass. Clear as day. And if it's the hardest. Man was born without an ass. No it's ass. Hard, it's been hard your whole life. It's like, that's the last thing I want to do is like do that. Oh yeah. That, time, that's, right? Which is obviously the reason why you got to do it right. Yeah. You, it's you got to work on your yeah. donk, dude. Just just like, no, you know man. Saying? You would probably. Hannah be psyched, man. <laughs> She'd be psyched. That's where that hip thrust I have been working on it. Just not like, I'm not throwing like 45s, you know, shout out Joe's dad. 45s only. Not throwing 45s only on the glute bridge. That's right. You'd probably do fantastic 
fantastic from just like Jefferson curls, not not a crazy heavy weight, but just a nice mobility, floor range of motion, a little bit of load. I guarantee we load those hips up. That's what you need, like yeah. strengthening through that for sure. Because you probably stretch your hips. You've been trying every to stretch time, them. right? I mean, every time I work out, I absolutely stretch my hips. Now loading them up uh, would be potent, right? Yeah. Potent. I like that. We're gonna get on to another fad um, that I want to talk. All right. Through. <laughs> Can, well, I you guys, can I circle back real quick to yeah, like your, your prehab for the dry try? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would say, it, you know, such a short time frame, it, being such a endurance long event, you don't have enough time to on-ramp to prehab it. Probably focusing on your recovery post-event is going to be the most beneficial for, for your doms. Um, yeah, I got, I'm getting married the next Saturday after that. I'm just imagining myself, my legs just, <laughs> we're getting married up on like five steps. I'm like in a buckle on the way down really? after they announce Cramping me. Have body. you ever, you've really been sore for a full week before? No, dude. Oh, okay. but getting maybe after this, oh, you know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. after doing a dry try on four oh, days notice or getting whatever, married in yeah. a week and a half, a week and a day. Let's go. Yeah, Congrats, man. Awesome. Thank you. Congrats. Congrats. I'm excited. Super pumped. Trying to join the club, baby. Let's I'm looking, go. I'm looking yeah. forward to it, man. Come on. Um, your stretching will not get any better once that happens. <laughs> <laughs> well stated. But uh, as far as like, recovery, you don't know what we're into though, dude. You know, whoa, you don't whoa, know. I'm whoa, just whoa. Easy. <laughs> this is a family show. Yeah, come uh, on. Um, you said boner neck. Shut up. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's just a technical term, guys. I'm going to use the textbook term. Yeah. Um, but but like, bitch, heavier weight to focus on like hydration, sleep, protein intake after your event, and general walking activity would help with blood flow response decreasing your soreness what do we call that um what do you call that now i'm now i'm drawing a blank when you're like let's say i'm going for a walk that would be your what kind of recovery like active recovery active day. recovery yeah i feel like the best thing Phrase for doms is to go move right you got i would not just beat the crap out of that with the foam roll or trying to stretch it i would just go load it yeah, Kyle's gonna hit the gun over there with the gun and the crossball. But Listen, I would dude, I'm gonna do that. an obnoxious. Every time I'm really ball. sore, I, I'm like, let's do an Good. obnoxious Absolutely. workout because it'll make me vessel. feel way better. It does core when I wear the weighted. Absolutely, it really helps with me actually engaging mm -hmm. that when I'm walking and so forth. Dude, I love those little like just movement snack hacks to just elevate uh, a normal activity and just bump it up a little bit because you're intentionally thinking about that 20 minute walk as far as your fitness, right? Mm -hmm. So absolutely, I love throwing on the vest for a walk. I like that too. Um, we got. A lot of, um, again, what adds to people's uncertainty and not really know what to do so they do nothing, right? We hear, um, and this is kind of fun, you know, if you get anybody watch the Tom Brady documentary and sitting here. Yeah. I haven't uh, seen Man it. in the Arena. Man in the Arena. Yeah. And then even before that, I think he had another one where it was like showing in details while he was still playing that this came out. And it was where they were really kind of showcasing the TB12 method. Yeah. Right. And uh, it was him and Julian Edelman, you know, I would guess at some point maybe Julian Edelman could be a Hall of Famer based on his playoff career. Yeah. And Julian's just laughing at Tom, right? He's just like, dude, what are you doing? You know, he's like, it's all about pliability. And, and Julian's like, dude, I'm going to go bench, sorry. Mm -hmm. And Tom Brady's just laughing at him like, yeah, it's really going to help you out on the field, dude. Like, make sure you, you know, stiff arm somebody better because you benched <laughs> today. You know, he's like, dude, yeah. it's all about pliability. And so what are your guys' thoughts on the TB12 method? Have you really researched it? Have you looked into it? And what makes it really any different from what you guys do at Onward? Ooh, good question. Um, I don't know specifics on the TB12 method. Um, I've heard the pliability term mentioned and as i've read like a few articles about it um <clears throat> if tom brady's goal was like longevity with uh basically moving against some sort of resistance through full range of motion uh, you could think of it like some type of controlled load and exercise stimulating the joint um joints of your body through uh multiple planes different directions uh end range not just like a partial range of motion or something for him so I could see a lot of value in that kind of idea, but I don't know specifics on the actual. Because think about it like yeah. this, like what you guys are saying real quick. It's like, think about it like this. You have athletes who have been conditioned their entire active life, right? right. That they need to lift weights. And you guys are saying, hey, most, most of the time you're stretching too much. We need to put some load on there, right? right? And then you got a guy like Tom Brady who's like, why are y'all lifting these weights? Sure. You know what I'm saying? Well, and obviously, you know, he's he's had some unbelievable longevity. I think it's arguable that... Tom Brady performed at the highest level as he aged before, as he, got older. before he retired. He yeah. had a, you know, an MVP like season yeah. in his final season, you know, through like yeah. 50 touchdowns. Yeah. And so my point is, you know, is it, is his position specific? Do you guys see that there is any kind of like a um, correlation between his pliability versus somebody who is like, let's just say a skill position player who their role is not to, you know, bowl people over, right? right. They got a, like Xavier worthy, new chief, right. fastest guy in the NFL. Sure. 
how does a guy like him prepare better for the football games? Does he does he lift more or does he work on this pliability, like you're saying, which is still resistance, right? but not heavy load, it seems like. Right. I think there's uh, multiple layers. I don't know much about the TB12, but you're seeing it more and more with shows on Netflix like quarterback, receiver. Have All these guys have body people just working on them, putting hands on them, working the tissues. I think that's where like Onward can come in for the lay person, the normal person, to just have continuous body work on them to kind of hit some of those troubled areas. But um, as far as like the difference in training, I love watching Bobby who trains Pat. Um, you'll see it where Bobby puts Pat in like the back bend position mm-hmm. and then he gets kind of tackled weird and he's able to spin out of it and not get hurt. And I think that just eludes the idea of like, okay, how do I kind of hit all these facets of like fitness and moving my body, right? Um, Did you see the video that they put out? Oh, yeah. That was it's sick. sick. Because it was sick. like all the all the exercises right. and then exactly what it was happening in the game. Absolutely. You know, at that point. Bobby talks about how, how strength is an expression of my body, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why I love like functional fitness, especially when we get around like sandbags where it's not conventional. There's not like correct form. It's just like my body's capacity to move around in the natural range of motion and be able to handle that. Yeah. So I think all that to say like um, variance in training and when we're talking about the NFL, like these guys are sports specific. Yeah. This, this video is incredible. It's incredible. Awesome. He's, he's doing this and then it shows him directly using that motion in the game for sure. It, it speaks to the specificity of his training. Like he's intentional about putting stress on his body. That's going to mimic things he'll find when he's performing. But then when we, when we, Take it down. So, like, all these guys, you know, Xavier Worthy, we're talking about speed, straight line. This is very niche to the NFL. But when we pull out for Gen Pop, that's why it's so important to get these people into a fitness space that I'm now pushing range of motion. If we think about, like, squatting, our knees don't bend that much in the normal day-to-day from sitting, that sort of thing, unless we're in the gym. So then don't be surprised when someday I can't bend my knees that far anymore because I haven't been expressing that um, range in my body in any way. Right. So that's where the gym is the most powerful. I'm expressing ranges of motion. I'm expressing strength that I wouldn't otherwise be doing if I wasn't in this space doing this thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Our, our joints. It, the value like, is being physically in the gym in that right. instance because you have a playground here to test. Exactly. What you do. Okay. Your body can express those ranges where you just don't get unless you're in the space. Are, are joints like muscle tissue where they regenerate when you're basically using them? Joints love movement. That's mm-hmm. like when you sit in the chair too long, you're super stiff when you stand up, right? right. If you lo- if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. It's really, really wow, just like Jeff. your best position <laughs> is your next position, right? Yeah. Once you've stuck somewhere, just move to the next thing. Yeah. What are you? Th- why are you laughing? Dude? I'm just saying you might be. Out the you buzzwords. might have a future in person in physical therapy. You know. Yeah, yeah, dude. If yeah, dude. You, you, people come into you really and you just be like, things and, and summing them up into terms we all understand. The somebody right comes into Jeff's the buzzword physical guy, huh? physical <laughs> therapy and he's like, "Well, have you tried moving it? Because if you don't, you'll you lose it." <laughs> then I put on my white lab coat and I walk out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, exactly. I, I think welcome to the Gatorade Institute of Research. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> to kind of allude on like like your question. Um, if, if you're not going to like stress that particular joint or tissue through full range of motion in your training, or if it's your gen pop everyday life person, um, that's where problems happen. Mm. So if someone's programming is too heavily uh, focused or stressful on like the, the knees aren't going through a full range of motion through your squat, or it's t- just too heavily focused on just bilateral squatting with both legs instead of mixing in more accessory work with it's like lunging or rear foot elevated split squats. Um, or if it's your typical gen pop person who just sits at a desk all day, problems happen when they spend too much time doing that thing versus getting some variability and variety in their training or their lifestyle, which is what getting into a fitness routine or gym community is all about is supporting a, a active workout program. That's going to change not only how you feel physically, but probably long-term your life. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool, man. Cool. Well, I, uh, it's been interesting talking to you guys, man. I, yeah, we have one everything. last we have one last question that we always ask every uh, every guest. You guys both from Kin City? You're from Wichita. Grew up Wichita. You grew up in Wichita. What part of Wichita, man? East we can talk about this after the because podcasters don't want to listen to us talk about where we're Kyle's from. Like, I'm from Derby. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I'm from, from the Dirty Derby. You're from you're from Casey though. Yeah, yeah. So you live here now though. Um, been living here a minute. Yep. Yeah. What is you guys' number one go-to spot when it comes to barbecue in Kansas City? 
Where are you mm. where are you sending your friends and family when they come to visit? What's the number one spot? I I default to Joe's, the gas station. Uh, the never, old school one. Yeah. Casey Joe's. Never disappoints. Um, but I would say uh, recently getting a Traeger grill, I tend to bias and like, I'm just going to cook that at home actually instead. So there, you just actually up. hit the buffer. You told me you were 35. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it that's is the, about time you start the, uh, smoking meats. You get yeah. an entry level card for uh, smoking meats at 35. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. That's really how it works, man. I don't it's know what it is. legit too. I don't know what it is about us in the Midwest, but when you hit 35, you're like, oh. Got to give it a try. Got to get myself a, a grill. Got to put a you know yeah. a, a reverse sear on some stuff. You oh, know what I mean? Like all the terms. <laughs> you are throwing the lines out. Yeah. Today. Have you have you uh, have you done a brisket yet? Is the real question for That's all the a pork butt? And no, you. the brisket's the hardest. Pork pork butt was a couple weeks ago, and then the ribs were this past weekend. And uh, the what would bri- you prefer in the two? Um, pork butt. The pork would look good. Yeah, it was it was delicious. You had that dialed in. My, my son loved it. Are you uh, have you thought about green egg? Any of those, like the mm. the red, the, what are they called? Like the red Komodo Joe or something like that. Green Komodo egg. Joe, it, mm. um, red guy, same thing as a green yeah. egg. If you got red. if you got a Traeger, you're yeah. good to go. I've heard great things about the green egg. Um, I would say the main con for my lifestyle is I've heard the the usability of like the time commitment to jumpstart it, just get it warmed up takes a good 45 minutes to an hour. Also, you know, they're not practical. They're not automatic with keeping the, the heat, the right, which triggers are, you just set, you just set it it and and it just does, it keeps it. It will literally beep at me and tell me like, okay, temperature is here. Yeah. Let it go for this long. Yeah. We talked about those three flights of stairs in my house. The fact that my grill, I can just like (laughs) mess with the temp from the third floor is amazing. For sure. Totally worth it. Uh, we appreciate your guys' time. What was yours? He's got, I'll go, uh, Jack stack. Jackson. I specifically like the downtown location. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's the train one called? It's like train something or you know what I'm talking about. There's a there's I a fun name called. for that. But yeah, that just like they have more wood in there. It's a really cool it, space. It is a tall ceiling. Yeah. It's just got the right vibe in there. Yeah. I bring agree in, with bring the bringing the family there. Oh, next yeah. week. Next week when they all you come are? in town. See the there wedding, you, go. you know? Exactly. Nice. Bringing my mom for her birthday to that there Jack Stack specifically. Shout out to Mama Jeff. Let's go. That's, that's the right. first Jack Stack I went Sally, to. Sally, dude. See. Sally. You don't hear that? Old much. Sal. That's right. That's right. We call, her, we call her old Sal. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's awesome. Anyways, where, where can everybody find you guys? Um, our office is at 95th and Nall. Okay. Uh, in the Meadowbrook office building uh, right on that northeast corner. 95th and Nall in what city? Uh, it's Prairie Village Overland Park. I got it. We're okay. getting it hurt less, in. get hurt less. And yeah. onward, yeah. Kansas City is the Instagram handle. And you guys have some personals you want to shout out as well? For sure. Mine is uh, at Joe Straws. I think it's with the dot DPT at the end. Yeah. Oh, right on there the money. Is. And then uh, you, my It's a good glamour shot. Thank Sorry. you. My personal is uh, Matt Sullivan dot DPT. Love it. Hey, man, I really appreciate you guys' time. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. For Thanks for having us. Yeah, it was man, awesome. Really Super fun it. conversation. We'll do it again soon. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Killed it, dudes. Killed it.